Hi, my name is Linda Fogarty, and I'm very happy to be here today. Um, I am the Director of Measurement, Evaluation, Research, and Learning at the International Youth Foundation. I'm, um, that's headquartered in Baltimore. I work out of California, and I'm um, glad to be here also on behalf of my colleague, Narmeen Fayela, who is the Senior Specialist Institutional Capacity Strengthening in um, our office in Palestine. Um, Narmeen can't be with us today because she's on maternity leave, um, but I'm very happy to be here for the two of us to talk to you today about transforming vocational education and training for women in Palestine. Today, I'll be describing the effects of an intervention to work with education and vocational training systems to integrate life skills training and provide career guidance with special focus on women to improve employment opportunities in Palestine, West Bank and Gaza. This work was funded by the Caterpillar Foundation. I wanna go over the questions that we had for this uh, research and this study. First, can life skills be integrated into vocational and training centers in West Bank and Gaza? Second, do VTC students receiving life skills trainings report improved life skills after the training? And then finally, do students have expanded understanding of professional choices open to them, particularly gender non-traditional choices after receiving career guidance? I wanted to talk to you a little bit about unemployment in Palestine. You can see here unemployment is quite high, 23% unemployment rate in West Bank and 63% in Gaza. Among women, it's much higher at 63% than for men, but also high for men at 31%. And part, some of the reasons that unemployment is so high um, is that young people are inadequately prepared to meet the demands of the labor market. And that's in terms of both technical skills and life skills. So vocational training centers have a large role to play here. Right now though, there's a fairly um, large current gender gap between those enrolled in vocational training centers with 69% of those enrolled being men versus 31% being women. In vocational training centers, there's a low availability of career guidance and uh, a lack of attention to gender norms. We know that there's good evidence that life skills benefits youth. We know that life skills training reduces violence, teenage pregnancy, and and marriage, um, it reduces drug use and participation in illegal activities. We also know from our own research at the International Youth Foundation that greater life skills leads to greater employment, higher wages, stronger educational outcomes, improved self-confidence, resilience, and optimism. I wanted to present to you this life skills framework that we use at International Youth Foundation. It has four domains, higher order thinking skills that includes, for example, creativity and innovation, problem solving. Uh, the second domain is interpersonal skills, which includes communication, teamwork. Um, and the third domain is community mindset. Uh, that includes things, for example, empathy, responsibility, and then finally, positive mindset, which uh, is, for example, self-confidence, self-management, resilience. We use this life skills framework at IYF to support all of the work that we do in this area. This project, the Equip Youth Program, was funded by Caterpillar Foundation. It was a five-year project for the purpose of aligning vocational training center trainings and labor market needs. Uh, in that work, we worked very closely with the Ministry of Labor to integrate life skills and career guidance into the standard curricula um, by equipping teachers and staff with knowledge, skills, and attitudes. So we taught teachers, um, we worked on the logistics, the um, 
we trained the staff to make sure that they understood the framework around life skills. And um, they in turn, of course, um, trained students. The overall goal again was to bridge gaps in training provided by VTCs and the current labor market requirements by providing life skills, career guidance to achieve a sustainable environment for youth employability. In that work, we worked in 16 TVETs in Gaza and West Bank and trained 81 teachers reaching 1,100 students. Those students were ranging in the ages of 16 to 30 and 29% of them were women. Part of the intervention was also holding gender awareness workshops and we held 53 of those. I wanted to talk a little bit more about some of the interventions that we used to influence culture. Um, we had, we created posters and videos like the one that you see up here that um, had messages in them to support women's choice in the workplace and in vocational training. So for example, this one, as girls, we face many challenges while joining various specializations, especially in vocational training centers due to the societal view of girls enrollment in VTCs. I'd like to send a message to all girls to choose their majors based on their passions, desires, and ambitions. So these were the sorts of messages that we um, provided in the posters and in the videos to, to community members and to students. In addition, there was an attempt to influence the, lear the learning culture itself. Um, so for example, you can see here from the director of the YMCA, um, the shortest way to develop societies is to involve men and women equally. Thus, we created an atmosphere of intimacy within the center as well, we created educational programs that enhance and encourage the participation of women in the labor market. Those programs are always in constant development and change. So that was on the intervention side. Getting to the methods of the, um, the study that we, that we used, we had qualitative and quantitative data. Um, first for qualitative, we interviewed teachers and administrators and also students we had um, a quantitative survey that we used for students, um, a subset of students that we, that we worked with, and that was a life skills survey with a sample of students. And then finally, we talked to students um, after the intervention to find out some of the outcomes of what had happened to them after the intervention. So that was a retrospective survey with a sample of students. I'm going to start with the systems change, some of the systems change um, results that we found. I think probably the most um, important finding was that, uh, for example, in Gaza, in the vocational training center, administration, official, uh, administration officially integrated a comprehensive course into their program plans called professional culture, which included life skills and career guidance. This professional culture um, course will be given to all students of Gaza VTCs. Uh, it's a requirement for graduation now. So this, uh, this course now has the potential to reach tens of thousands of young women and men in the future. So um, it can be obviously sustained and scaled. On the student side, we talked to 64 students, 47 of them female, 17 male, who most of whom were living in the city. And we use this 11 item life skills assessment scale. Um, you can see the scale uh, items listed here, starting with, um, I have overall personal skills, communication skills, creativity skills, teamwork skills, technical skills. I understand expectations of working well with others, job readiness skills, conflict resolution and problem solving. I believe I have a good future can contribute to society and have opportunities to achieve career goals. So these were items that were aligned with our um, IYF's life skills framework and reflected the modules in the, the life skills training. 
we found that all 11 items improved 30 percentage points or more, and that six items changed 50 percentage points or more. And those are bolded here, you can see them, such as the overall personal skills, creativity skills, expectations of working well, having a good future. But more importantly, I think, our outcome survey found that 48% of program graduates secured a job or an internship. So that was um, a very positive finding. On the qualitative side, I wanted to share a couple of quotes with you. Um, this is a student from the YMCA who said, I always hear, why did you join the vocational training sector while there are many other available specializations at the university you could join? Today and through my experience at the vocational field, I'm here to tell you I was able to discover myself, acquire new skills and develop my capacity. Now I'm sure I can compete in the labor market. One more quote from students. When you believe in yourself, when you follow your passion and when you have extraordinary opportunities to learn new skills like the ones I've learned from the PTS courses, you can easily challenge the status quo and break the boundaries of what you've been told must be. I wanted to also share one quote from a vocational training director. There are some positive indicators that reflect a social change in the perceptions of people toward vocational training, especially women's participation in non-traditional programs through vocational training centers. I believe that's the willingness of the young women with the support of their families to join non-traditional programs and professions. So in conclusion, we found for our first research question, can life skills be integrated into vocational training centers in West Bank and Gaza? We found yes, life skills and career guidance can be integrated um, into those um, vocational training centers. Our second question, do VTC students receiving life skills training report improved life skills after the training? Um, that one too, we were able to answer yes to. Um, doing so increases students' perceived life skills and also their hopes for the future and other dimensions. On the third question, do students have expanded understanding of professional choices open to them, particularly gender non-traditional choices after receiving career guidance? Our results are less um, confirming we found anecdotal evidence that suggests that after career guidance, some female students have greater understanding of an access to non-traditional professional choices. But I think we need to look at this a little bit further. We weren't able to demonstrate that in terms of how um, the, the choices that women make. Um, so that's something that we really need to follow up on. Um, luckily, we will be doing some more work in Palestine, so we'll be continuing to do this work um, and uh, look forward to supporting this work into the future. So thank you very much for your time.